Hello friends, I'd like to begin this video by inviting you to imagine you're sat in front of a small square monitor. It's resting on top of a keyboard made of thick, pleasingly granular cream plastic. Beside you sits disk drive, a brick of a thing into which you feed one disk and accept an invitation for this computer to be your portal into space. With those wonderfully pleasing graphics and the shrill sound the Apple II is able to make, um, already a world of the forbidding and the wondrous is conjured up for us, with forbidding tones as the star field appears um, and a path draws itself into space, inviting us on an adventure into the wondrous. We're here playing 1979's Space, released by Eduware, and created by uh, Eduware's founders, Stephen W. Pedersen and Sherwin A. Steffen. The game is something of a space simulation and something of a role-playing game. And to put that into context, it follows five years after uh, Star Trader, and it's contemporaneous with the Temple of Apshai. And the following year we see the release of the, uh, the seminal text adventure Zork, set in a comical fantasy world um, and also it's the year before um, more conventional dungeon crawling RPGs Odyssey the Complete Adventure and the Calabeth World of Doom but uh, space, space stands out on its own, it's quite a unique experience and it's one that's really um, captivated me now I've discovered it um, let me tell you a little bit about it from, from the manual to try and give you an introduction. You can see on the screen that um, already the game is telling us that space scenarios require the generation of characters. If you have no characters, play characters first. And that is indeed because space is, rather than being one integral game, is composed of different scenarios. Um, each one, to some extent, a game in its own right, and all sharing um, characteristics. Uh, so you'd begin with uh, characters, character generation as its own game. I'll um, dip into the manual here where while trying to describe the uniqueness of space it lists seven points of difference. It says space is a multi-scenario game. The results of later games are contingent on earlier games. Risk benefit is part of every game. Randomness is a part of every move. Information is deliberately imprecise. Winning is in the eyes of the player. Exit points exist for some of the games. Which is to say that um, you can't save at every opportunity, but there will be certain points when you can. Um, I think there's there's quite a few hints there as to, as to what kind of game space will turn out to be. Um, it's effectively an open-ended game. There's no, there's no one objective. Um, it's up for the the player to decide themselves what they want out of this game, um, and to to explore its mechanics. Because the while well, the manual does go into some detail about each of these scenarios it presents, um, it's very oblique on what the mechanics are uh, of each. 
it gives you a, a basic outline of the situation the character is in, um, but not how that game will, will function in its entirety. So the best way to explore space is to, to venture into it. I hope you're excited. I am I'm ready to go on a new adventure and meet some new people. So let's queue up. Option number one, characters. Characters. To the player, follow all prompts as they appear in inverse print. The game is self-explanatory during play. Which, let's see, let's see. Uh, enter character name. 16 characters or less should be input. Okay, the, the first name we're going to choose is Electra Boston. Let's see what we presented with. To Electra Boston, unclassified child from Office of Military Selection. Subject, enlistment induction to Earth Military Services. Pursuant to the powers vested in Office of Military Selection, you are hereby directed to make yourself available to one of the six, six units of military service listed below. Failure to comply with this order within one deck hour will result in an order for your arrest as a service fugitive. Now we have a choice of uh, military services to enter. We can choose Navy, Marines, Army, Scouts, Merchant Marines, other services, or I don't care, draft me. So already we're, we're plunged into a situation where we're having to make potentially a very important decision um, amongst having very little choice as to as to where our life will head. So I think we we don't know where the winds are going to take us, where the uh, space lanes are going to take us, so let's try I don't care draft me and see where we end up. To draft E Electra Boston from Office of Military Training, subject assignment to service. Since you're either elected to be drafted were found unqualified to be accepted at the service of your choice, you are immediately to report to the Navy training facility closest to your residence. Let's find out what happens next. Accessing file data. Initial pre-enlistment file. Military Service Master Record Jacket. Military Service Navy. Current rank, Term 1, Inductees, Unranked. Current age, 18. Service term, number 1. The following sections are available for inspection by the subject pursuant to the Earth Freedom of Information Act, Title 9, Subsection B, point one point two, First Earth Congress Year 2727 Galactic. And now we can, we can see what our appraisal is by the, by the Navy. Um, so let's start with number one, our basic attribute status. And here we're told our name and age. Um, and given values for strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, education, and social standing. So I will I will mention that the manual says that these attributes can be anywhere from two to twelve. That's their scale. So we have a fairly middling array, I'd say, apart from in our social standing, where we appear to be very high. Um, do you want to review other pages? I'm going to press Y for yes and enter. So let's have a look at our results of our physical examination. Summary of physical examination, subject name, Electra Boston, current rank and age, uh, system review, cardiovascular, moderate heart problem, pulmonary, moderate breathing problem, skeletomuscular, moderate deficit, neurologic, correctable deficit. wonder what that means. Vision, correctable impairment, hearing, 10 decibels of hearing loss. Summary of findings. With moderate impairment of cardiovascular system, only limited physical activity is re recommended for this private. So it's, it's interesting to be given your limitations by someone else's assessment. So this is, this is our means of finding out about ourselves in the world. Let's have a look at our psychological uh, assessment by pressing number three. We have the same details up top. Test findings. IQ, so we've been our intelligence has been measured and is given us 136. And our personality summary. 
The subject is prone to extreme violence and must be carefully controlled at all times. Recommendations, placement in military police, job assignment. I don't know if that's wry humour. It's hard to tell. The, um, the interface of the game is it's always through computer screens. You're always interacting with a system to get information out of it. And uh, the tone is very phlegmatic. So it's hard to tell if there are any elements of humour in here. Um, I'm going to take it at face value as a face value recommendation. So let's have a look at what else we can look at here. So this is our this is the place where we start our life. This is we're assessed and told who we are, what our limitations are, and what what other people's expectations are of us. Um, let's have a look at promotion, demotion, and discharge records. So currently we have no promotional attempts um, and no demotions, which is fair enough. We've only just been drafted. So we can have a look at our financial status as well by pressing six. We have no money, but uh, we'll insurance paid upon our death will be one thousand galactic credits. Um, I wonder who that will be paid to. That will be paid to the navy, or um, the a next of kin. I wonder who Electra's next of kin is. Okay. So I know that the next step of uh, the process will be training. So let's have a look at number four, which is the only thing we've missed here, current skills and training. That will reiterate our um, fundamental skills that we, we saw before. There does appear to be um, a bug in the game where, apart from that one screen, intelligence appears as a, uh, as a different number. I think possibly it substitutes the IQ number for the, the 2 to 12 value. Um, so it's omitting our scores for those but the the importance of looking here is these are our opportunities for um, for learning for self-improvement while we're with the Navy and um, in the world of this game that though these are our entire opportunities uh, to learn before we go out into the universe so we can we can study um, ship's boat vacuum suit Forward Observer, Blade Combat, Gun Combat, Gunnery, Vacuum Suit, Mechanical, Electronic, Engineer, Gunnery, Jack of Trades, Medical, Navigation, Engineer, Computer, Pilot, and Administrative. Um, I think Gunnery is replicated in a couple of different places, and Vacuum Suit is replicated as well. Um, so uh, the question we have to ask ourselves is what what do we expect? What skills do we expect to use um, immediately in in service, and then for the rest of our lives? What 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 are we going to choose? Um, I think we might try and enhance some of our fundamental skills um, first of all. So I'm going to say no to reviewing other pages, and that will take us into training. Here we are to Electra Boston from Director of Training, Galactic Navy HQ. Subject. Selection of turn number one. Having reviewed your file, it is now time for you to select your training for year one of this term of service. So let's choose personal development, the first group of skills. Um, you can see the intelligence bug there again. So social standing is at its maximum. Um, I think the lowest value there is probably the one we ought to go for. So I'm going to press one to improve our strength. Checking acceptance. Choice approved pending psych. Okay, I don't know about you, but I feel very tense waiting to know if I, if my choice will be accepted. Psychiatric acceptance. Ah, and now we get a message. We get a message to me, the player, to character player from game control computer. Subject quality of character. Have reviewed all attributes of this character. The player is warned that projections indicate final characteristics of this character will result in an inferior product. With this in mind, the player is given the following options. 1. Start the game with a new character. 2. Continue with this character. or 3. End the game for now. Uh, it, it is nice of the game to be considerate that the character might struggle in different situations, but all the same, I feel 
this kind of prompt draws me to be more attached to a character to see see a person through and to make the best of their opportunity so I'm going to continue with this character please do I wish to review current status yes please it's very considerate of the naval service to continually um, assess and inform us of its opinion um, but at the same time I wonder if continual appraisal doesn't limit us in some ways so let's see so we're, we're slightly more level now with with five strength um, education intelligence might need to be higher for us to learn other skills so I think we ought to focus on those this time um, so I'm going to say no on this occasion to looking at any other further statistics and we'll go back into training for our, our next term um, let's choose personal development again and on this occasion I'm going to go for education as that is, I remember that's lower than intelligence. Oh, so six, there we go, six will check education. So, shaking acceptance. It's very nerve wracking to, um, to know we may not be permitted to, to do what we choose in life. Psychiatric acceptance. Again, we, again, we have this warning from the game that we, we may not. We may not um, prosper with this character, or as it very coldly puts it, uh, this character will be an inferior product. But it does it reinforces my commitment to Electra. So let's review our current status. So altering our statistics can change some of our assessments. Let's see if anything has changed in our physical examination. Um, seem to have the same moderate deficits, um, correctable impairments and hearing loss. Let's see if anything has changed in our psychological assessment. We're still prone to extreme violence and are recommended into the military police. I haven't, um, in previous playthroughs, I haven't yet found any option to, to be assigned to the military police. Um, so I do wonder if if that is a possibility so much of um, so much of the options are mysterious and the the underlying mechanics behind everything are unknown um, this game can often be encouraging and surprising Let, I think I'm finished with inspection for now I think we'll try and um, boost our intelligence rating. It's our next endeavour. Choice approved pending psych, okay. Acceptance pending psychiatric treatment. So we, once more, the warning. Which I'm going to I'm going to continue with Electra. Um, review our current status. Sometimes following a treatment, um, our appraisal can can change as well. Let's have a quick check in on our statistics. So intelligence of ten, uh, to me that seems quite high on the the scale that they've set. Um, I will have a look at the other statistics. I think I'd be tempted to boost strength a little too. Um, but let's have a look at our psychiatric evaluation. Ah, so now now we've been treated. It says the subject will show some decompensation under situations of combat stress, which is um, a quite an unusual vocabulary uh, for for saying that we we might come apart and go to pieces under stress. Um, so recommendations are now under strong leadership. Subject will do well in most situations. So as long as we're told what to do, um, the Navy's expectation is that we should perform effectively. So their opinion of us has improved, I'd say. 
Um, let's go look at other pages. I'd quite like to um, train Electra in some, some further skills because um, I don't know how many um, terms of service Electra will be able to complete in the Navy. So I'd like to equip her with as many useful skills as possible if that's what we can achieve. So let's have a look at the list again and we'll try to pick something that we think will be useful in future. Um, so we don't appear to be facing combat at the moment um, and also there is concern over our physical status. So I wonder if some um, skills with a broad application would be useful. I mean we're, we're heading out into the vastness of space aren't we? We're going to explore the stars so maybe navigation or, or piloting would be would be a, a great skill to have. So um, I'm tempted to be a pilot I think. Let's see if let's see if we can achieve that. Okay Electra, let's try professional development number four option. Um, piloting please. Okay let's wait to see if um, physical condition limits choice. Does that mean we can't choose to be a pilot? Since you have physical, psychiatric or intellectual limitations which made it impossible to be admitted to training for the skill that you selected, you must now select another skill. So there, our, the assessment of our body is that we're, we're unable to achieve that. Maybe we could be the navigator. Let's try that. Let's wait for. Okay, so uh, they don't see any physical limitation there as a problem. We need more psychiatric treatment apparently to to qualify. Uh, but I'm content to continue on, and I'd love to view my current status. So that was the end of year four of our first term in service, and that is that is the very end of that term. So let's check in with our attributes there, um, as expected, and our physical examination. I don't expect anything to change there, that appears to be the same. And we'll also have a look at our psychological state. Um, signs of, de of decompensation again. Um, so let's just check in on our current skills and training. Um, so we can see that we did achieve to learn some navigation. So let's move on to our our graduation essentially from this term in the Navy. Um, I don't know if there's a better term for it. I believe it's passing out maybe in the Army. But I don't know about the Galactic Navy. To Electra Boston from Galactic Space Services Department of Navy. Re reenlistment retirement. Having successfully completed term number one with the service to which you were assigned, you now have three choices available to you. This is a warning to us, the player. Additional reenlistments entail cumulative risks of death or disabling injury. So consider that. Um, we'll consider that in our choices. So our options are. 1. Re-enlist if qualified. 2. Retire with cash benefits. Or 3. Retire with material reward. I I think that Electra could benefit from another term in the Navy to gain more, more skills. Request rejected. Poor fiscal condition makes further investment by the Navy inappropriate. You are therefore discharged with a killed while on duty inspection pod discharge. I don't know whether that's... It's hard to tell whether that's uh, intentional or an error. Um, it seems uh, troubling if they don't like our physical condition, condition and are going to discharge us with a killed while on duty notice. Let's see what the next screen brings. So that, that, that was the end of our opportunities to learn. The summary of financial status. Subject name Electra Boston, Service Navy, current rank term one inductees unranked. So we Electra has got to the age of twenty two. Um and so the money money paid on retirement, um 
one is 18.19 thousand galactic credits, which seems like a reasonable amount of money, I think, to me. Uh, so I will hit return there, which was to discharge retirement data. So we get a cash retirement bonus, maybe um, out of out of some kind of guilt from the the navy about having said that we were killed on duty. Uh, so we now have 24.19k. You have received an honourable discharge. The Navy, thank you for a job well done. Hit return to enter civilian life. And that is also the player's queue. If they have a save disc uh, for their characters, to swap that disc in now, which is what I will do. And I will hit return. That will save Electra. So what we will do now is we will return to the introduction screen and we'll find out about one of Electra's contemporaries. Listed at the same time as Electra was Sam Blankoff. To Sam Blankoff on Classified Child. What will Sam choose? I think Sam does have a destination in mind um, as there is uh, conscription for for all adults there is national service I think they have uh, a different one a different destination in mind the one that Electra ended up in I think they're going to head into the other services which I take to be support services um, around the um, the military. So we don't get any clues in the text there. It says welcome to other services. The other services is a proud tradition spanning many centiers. So you can tell time is, uh, is organized differently here in space in the future. So let's see um, where we are. Let's see how we're assessed. We'll find out how we appear in the world. Our attributes. Um, I say more generous spread this time. So Sam has strength of 10, dexterity of 7, endurance of 12, intelligence of 9, education of 12, social standing of 6. Let's see um, what else is going on for Sam. Um, physical condition. Normal heart, normal lungs, normal musculature, normal neurologic, 20-20 vision both eyes, hearing normal. So no detectable physical problems uh, that the scouts can can detect there. And then let's see what the psychological testing reveals about us. IQ of 135, subjects so prone to extreme violence. Another person is prone to extreme violence. I must be carefully controlled at all times. Placement in military police job assignment. So it's um it's this an interesting. I wonder if they're. Uh, just native native capacity for violence there, or I wonder if there's something more systematic going on. Let's see what skills and training are available to us in the scouts. I mean, so the service skills, sorry. I think I misspoke before and called this the scouts as well. Um, so, you see we can't, we can affect social standing, which I think was our lowest statistic. We can't affect all of those starting statistics but we have a great range of other things other trades and occupations so we can have blade combat and brawling which i don't recall from the navy forgery um i wonder what areas of life these would come in handy with uh, there's uh, gun combat bribery streetwise which might be useful uh for civilian life for everyone uh, mechanical electronic, um, there's some duplication there, medical, um, and jack of trades. There's quite a lot of duplicated skills there across the four categories. Um, so I think we'll go straight into training and we'll try and improve our social standing. So I believe that was the first category. Yeah, okay. I don't think we can improve our education or our intelligence so we don't when we're not given that opportunity um, 
now we're in the uh, the service occupations. Which, uh, by the mechanics we've seen so far, means um, we probably don't have a way to alter our psychiatric uh, assessment and to to appear differently to people. Let's see where we are. So we will go back to our basic attributes to remind me what what that's like. So dexterity and social standing are both seven, which I think is on the the lower side for getting other things to work. So intelligence is reasonably high at nine. Education is is maximum. So that's very helpful. Um, let's have a look at the skills we can learn again. I I wonder what what is Sam looking for uh, for the rest of their life? What would they like to what they like to know about? I feel that um, maybe a, a base in a strong base in lots of skills would be good. So let's go for jack of trades. Surely that must be applicable in in many situations in life. If they're willing to train us in it. Um, pending psych, okay. All the better. Okay, so I get the psychiatrists have accepted that um, and they're content to train us. Check of trades. Um, I, will, I will review our status. I'll look at that list of skills again to remind me where we can concentrate our energies. I feel that it's useful to have um, knowledge of how things work on the streets. So let's go for streetwise this time. We want the same category, professional education, um, which is quite a way of glamorizing being streetwise. Let's see if. Um, if our educators will allow this. They have. That's excellent. We'll continue to do with current status. I do. So the, I think we have the option of one more round of training before the end of our year and I think it might do to improve our dexterity somewhat I believe that's one we can alter let's try it it is fantastic so it's option two here um, I hope there would be no objection to that um, it's a physical skill and we haven't been given any signs of physical limitation psychiatrically acceptable okay this is the end of our first year so I think Sam will try and stay in for another and um, and progress further with with their education okay so we have the same warning as before so re-enlist if qualified, please. Quest projected psychiatric disability makes further investment by the other services inappropriate. Ooh, I, we, I hadn't checked our psychiatric state. I wonder if it altered. If we discharge with a medical discharge. That's different again, isn't it? Um, so in the ser in the other services. Um, Sam is being given more money, 38.52k collected credits. Um, a, a bonus again, so 50, 50,000. You received honourable discharge. So I would change discs again to save Sam for further adventures. 
And let's just check in on one more contemporary of our of our cadets. It's very important to um, make sure you have a clear memory or write down the exact names of your characters because that's what you use to access them again when you play the other scenarios. Let's meet our third character, the third, third draftee to the services. I'm going to say hello to There you go, I've just about reached the limit. We're going to say hello to Christina Maniatis. Oh, too long? For space constraints, we're going to say hello to Chris Maniatis. Now, Chris, I think, served in a a different branch of the um, the armed services are uh, I think in the scouts let's see what the assessment is for 18 year old Chris Manny artist strength of 9, dexterity of 11, endurance of 12 Intelligence of 2, education of 8, and social standing of 11. Let's have a look at the physical examination. Normal heart, normal lungs, normal musculature, normal neurologic, 2020 vision in both eyes, normal hearing. No concerns for the scouts there. And the psychological testing. Limited intelligence limits skills this patient can acquire. Patient? Oh, um, IQ of 81, it says at the top. Pa uh, uh, private should. Oh, maybe PT. I assumed PT was private, as in a military rank, but it probably is patient. Patient should emphasize improvement of IQ. I don't know if that's possible in the scouts. Recommendation subject enlisted man. Subject enlisted man should develop intelligence. Placement in intelligence gathering organisation so long as high rewards are provided. I don't know whether the, uh, the scouts employ man as a as an overall term for humans. Um, well, they have a a poor view of our um, future uh, on the basis of our intelligence. Let's see what else we can do. What can we learn in the scouts? We can choose to improve our intelligence uh, that would be really important so that's what we're going to do straight away to try and give um, Chris greater chances I wonder what process is used uh, by which the, um, the military can measurably improve someone's intelligence. I wonder what they do to alter their metric. I'm certainly going to continue with this character game. Let's check in. Just check those basic attributes again. So I think we just need to keep working on the intelligence for now. I think that's what the whole of this year will be be quite easy to decide. Um, continue. I won't check on the stats because I know exactly what we're trying to achieve. Another way to be refused re-enrollment is um, is by having uh, what is deemed as too low in intelligence to be accepted back into the into the service you're training with. So 
so we shall try our best. to give Chris the chance to, to learn more. I think this is the, our final, yeah, it's our final year of this term, so let's check in with um, how our attributes are looking. Um, it's had sort of six, so um, half halfway to the, the maximum of this attribute score. Um, I do wish to look at other pages. Let's see if anything's changed. Nothing's changed in our medical condition there. Um, and what does the psychiatric assessment say? Oh, so now we've increased our intelligence. We're we're prone to extreme violence. So um, there seem to be uh, repeating gradations that we're seeing, um, which I mean is slowly filling out some idea of how this world perceives people, which is interesting. We're, we're learning by exploring, exploring the world through how it reacts to our choices. Let's see, I guess we shall, let's have a little check of the, the skills that we might be able to um, influence if we can return to training. Um, we've got air raft, that seems to be a new one. Vacuum suit we, we saw before. Um, I think, yeah I don't think there are any new ones. I think, yeah, we'll uh, see what options we're allowed, if we are allowed to continue. I'm, um, I don't know about you, but I'm holding my breath in anticipation of uh, of whether we get to make it to a second term. Um, otherwise, this this batch of recruits would all have been rejected. Ah, <gasps> notice a state of war now exists between the Galactic Federation and invaders from outside the galaxy. All personnel are, by order of the Executive Council, to report immediately for assignment duty. All promotions, retirements, and discharge suspended for the duration of this emergency. So, no matter what our choice. We may have been uh, redrafted anyway. Ah, oh, excellent. They will let us train again. That's fantastic. Um, are we able to choose any of the professional education? No, we aren't. Can we improve our education? We can. Um, I feel like we should probably improve our intelligence a little more first. And then education. It's improved. And I feel that maybe improving our intelligence and our education in in the scout's eyes will enable us to um, improve their assessment of our of our mind. Um, I think I'll go I'll go straight to the training, please. then education this time please. Let's get some some fundamentals um, in place. I feel very lucky that um, so few of our requests have been rejected. And that's, that's kind of how this system encourages you to think, is that if you're given permission to do something you would choose to do, um, that you feel luckier. Do I wish to review the current status? I do. I would like to see what I can now learn. I think I have two, two more opportunities to learn. Um, let's try to learn some administration if we're able to. Um, so that would be professional education. Education low, choose again. May we learn any advanced education? We might be able to. Um, okay, maybe we'll learn medical in this case. Waiting on 
without psychological approval. Rejected psychiatric instability. Are we still the killer? Since you have physical, psychiatric or intellectual limitations which make it impossible to be admitted to training for the skill you selected, you must now select another skill. I think we're going to have to go into personal development again. And I will choose to improve intelligence. And then education, if we need to. We're completing our term there. I think it ended sooner than I hoped it would. Let's see what happens next. Um, I think definitely Chris would benefit from re-enlistment here. Oh no, psychiatric disability. So somehow our um, psychiatric state disintegrated. This um, it seems to be the case in all in all three of our recruits. Um, oh, a very low payout from the scouts. I wonder how randomised that is. I wonder if it's based on our social standing. It could be, couldn't it? I had a feeling Sam had a high social standing. Or was it Electra? Okay, um, I need to manage my discs to make sure Chris safely returns to civilian life. From previous experience creating characters for this game, I'd consider we have been very lucky. Not all three um, characters made it to to being discharged from the service. Um, many many characters I have uh, attempted to to help and develop through through that stage through that game uh, died during their training, which shows you how um, how much of a a challenge uh, just the, the character creation segment of spaces which is is quite an unusual thing I don't think I've seen it be as fully featured a part of gameplay in any other RPG that I've I've encountered it's that is quite an original thing I feel so what happens to our recruits when they've left the service what options are open to them I think they're going to be able to learn about this this vast universe they're in um, with the next scenario first blood first blood options solitaire player versus player player versus adversary I think sadly that this uh, the universe into which they've been born it's going to pit two characters against each other. So to recall a character we need to change disc and recall their name exactly as we recorded it at their birth. Stand by for transport and reassembly of Electra Boston. What do they mean by reassembly? on a uh, cellular level. So it's by the character I wish to deploy in combat. Sam Blankoff. Subject warrior Sam Blankoff. Oh, that disappeared very quickly. Battle inputs from Electra Boston. Weapons, unarmed, sword, automatic pistol, submachine gun, or laser rifle. Our cadets are going to learn that uh, the world is, is pitting individual against individual in a fight for resources. Electra Boston had no particular weapons chaining, but will take an automatic pistol. And for body armor, a leather jacket body suit or a bulletproof jacket and metal suit or a laser reflective suit or a heat resistant suit 
or a powered combat armor. I think sensible choice is probably a bulletproof jacket and a metal suit. Electro Boston, where will you be parachuted into? Is it the plain and prairie, the desert, the forest or woods, the swamp or marshland, or the city exterior? I think it will be you'll be surprised in the city. Sam Blenkoff chooses a sword and is given a heat resistance suit. Ah, and chooses their own terrain to approach from the desert. Battle selection Electra Boston is the attacker. How does Electra attack from the back with surprise? Is her instinct? Attack range is medium for a pistol. Attack speed. Stopped. Sam Blenkoff is the defender. What, does, what defense mode do they choose? Do they use constructed barriers? Physical strength? Psychological methods? High technology? Counterattack? Can we recall Sam's strengths? Probably not psychological methods. Um, I don't think Sam had much training in anything uh, of construction or high technology. Maybe physical strength will um we'll see the three. So they've made choices. And they're being pitted against each other. And all we can do is watch and read. And read this round to minor to both. Round two. Electro Boston has attacked. Attack met with response. Defender seriously injured. Oh, Sam. Round three. Electro Boston has attacked. Attack met with response. Computer monitoring results. Electro Boston has been killed. Sam Blenkoff takes the possessions. What, what possessions could these people have had? What were they left with? How could I know? What mysteries? The game is now finished. What do you wish to do next? The text disappeared very quickly, but that gives us our first indication in the game, um, and the manual is very clear about it too, that if a character uh, dies, their file is erased, and they no longer exist. Um, which reinforces really how how precious and how fleeting life is. Let's see where Sam goes next. We're going to stick with Sam, who has to live with the, the experience of being pitted to the death against someone. He's going to explore their options in the world of commerce by becoming a trader. I wonder what resources you gained from your victory, Sam. Before entering interstellar commerce as a trader, you must acquire a starship. Two varieties are available. A scout ship, a small ship carrying up to 10 passengers and 10,000 tons of cargo. Costs 1 million galactic credits. A merchant vessel, a full-sized vessel equipped for 70 passengers and 100 tons of cargo. The price is 8 million galactic credits. Ship acquisition terms. The purchaser is Sam Blenkoff, credit rating of 49. Uh, somewhere will tell us what cash uh, Sam has. Sam ha only has 74.71 credits. Somehow. And it costs a million to become a trader. Not even 74.71k. wonder what happened. 
So we're not we're not able to to trade here. There's nothing we can do. Let's see what other options might be open to Sam. How do you imagine Sam to be? How do you imagine them to to feel? Having been faced with the reality that they they are poor. Uh, they can't trade. Um, can they invest in any stocks? Let's have a look with the personal portfolio master at Galactica Investment Services Unlimited. Check the uh, Everything is measured in millions here. We can see there are many companies that must must be important to the running of this universe. But their the acquisition of even a single share is measured in the millions. So we have no transactions to make. I'm sorry, Sam. But let's look. Even a system that doesn't work for us. Might still be able to tell us some information about the way the universe around us. So we can we can look at prospectus for these companies that seem so vaunted, uh, so rich, and control the universe. Let's have a look at Milky Way munitions. Confidential investment profile. C. Copyright, I suppose. Super Solar Investment Services. Eyes only. Availability intergalactic exchange current price per share per unit galactic credits four point two seven million net increase decrease last quarter plus nothing nature of operations manufacture of modern weapon systems for human nations private armies and starship operations it tells us the financial potential um, the personal risk that we'd be under. Let's find out, find out more about this universe. The Star Data Systems. Their shares are 2.12 million each. They had no increase last quarter. The nature of the operations are research, development, leasing, and sale of high technology computing systems. Let's have a look at Starships Unlimited. 2.6 million uh, per unit. Nature of operations, manufacture of small military and all varieties of commercial vessels. Hybrid foodstuffs. It's a, um, invites, invites curiosity. Um, 0.27 million per, per share. Nature of operations, growth of human foodstuffs using modern techniques. Which leads us to wonder, doesn't it, how how food is generated? Let's see. So this is Cosmic Communications Corp. Uh, 0.89 million per share. Nature of operations: rental and leasing of interstellar data and communication lines. Is a communications company. Well, these must be very important to life in the stars. Hyper transliners is next 2.06 million per share the nature of their operations all classes of transportation for civilian passengers as well as shipping for high-valued cargo next rent a force limited which seems a somewhat flippant uh, title for something which it's probably going to be very serious. Um, 8.23 million per share, very expensive shares. Nature operations, rental and self-serving use of private paramilitary operations, strictly clandestine. It's the, the black ops of this, this universe. Right to be able to trade in these companies that trade in lives. Social services, a public service maybe. Um, 0.38 million per share. Nature of operations. A financially productive operation deriving its income from the control, distribution and underwriting the galaxy's oldest and most basic profession. 
that's somewhat obscure. I wonder. I wonder if they're talking about vice. Number eight is stationary trips. It's a curious title. Six point two six credits per share. That's another quite high value. Nature of operations, manufacturing, shipping, distribution and sale of recreational substances, plus the financing of favourable treatment from governmental authorities. Oh. Drugs and bribes. Uh, I think I'm beginning to see where bribery might have come in handy. But then we can't, we can't work for these people. There's no, there are no opportunities for jobs outside service. Let's view another. Uh, Stella Security is next. 9.87 million per, per share there. The nature of operations, sale of insurance packages made necessary by this organization's control of various shipping and communications lines. Oh, they seem to have something of a monopoly. Strange that these, uh, these vast enterprises um, so rich and so controlling exist so far into space. Was there another to look at? Data control services. I wonder what they're like. Um, another high value share, 8.46 million. The nature of operations? Embezzlement, theft, fraud, and blackmail, all perpetrated through the underground manipulation of various data sources and media in the galaxy. So, what might be a black market in, in information is freely traded on the stock exchange. So increment by increment we're getting a picture of of this universe into which Sam has been been plunged with so so few opportunities for them. The one opportunity left is to become an explorer. But for now I think we'll turn our attentions back to Chris and see how she's doing. Chris wanted to learn administration before uh, being refused re-entry to the scouts um, and has found her way into a position where she's employed to defend a starbase. is a lot of information. There are different groups of text. The text is changing. Barbaric pirates are attacking. Hit any key to execute command. I think we need to do that very soon. I've pressed a key. Phew. Okay, let's have a look at these choices that we have. Sometimes we're presented with responsibility and over overwhelming amount of information that we find it hard to process. Um, but we, we try and make choices. Let's see. The resident population is 142. The only other value we have are energy reserves of 414. We can change the evacuation status um, so we can get people out if we need to. We can change energy to defense shields, change offensive weapon energies, surrender, attempt personal escape, or enter no command. I think we ought to defend ourselves. but also uh, have offensive capabilities to try and deflect the pirates. I feel like even with um, a very baseline in military service, that would, that would seem to be sensible. So these are for the sensor shields. Let's allocate 10 points of energy. And for the shield for the defenses, I guess that might be more important. Let's add, let's uh, allocate twenty there, and then ten for the starport, uh, ten for the residences, ten for the energy banks. These are all vital systems. Ten for the control center. That's the end of that. Oh, I need to make another command. I've pressed the key. 
Okay, so I still have a 359. So let's see if we can pop that into our offensive weapon capability. 359. It's a limit of 7. Let's put 70. Sorry, 70. Let's put 70 in. Um, what is happening? Uh, the energy banks are red. Um, there's a, f a flashing cross that might be the, the pirates. Oh, congratulations. You successfully defended the 9.7 colony from a vicious and unprovoked attack. The Federation is currently calculating a bonus to reward Chris Maniatis for your superior sense of duty. Chris, you weren't sure what you were doing, but, but somehow it did work out all right. So Chris gained a cash bonus for superior service of 0.77 million. Um, so Chris has 775,005 credits, 0 0.611. That's, um, that's got to be the, the shortest of these scenarios, surely. Let's switch back to Sam. Uh, and see how they're doing exploring the universe. So far we've been afforded little opportunity to explore freely the universe. We've been offered opportunities, denied opportunities, and been in tension between the information we're given and what, what we know and what we perceive, um, and struggle to make the best choices. But let's Let's see if we can go into space and, and see new worlds. I think things might be looking bleak for Sam at this point in their life. Um. I think they would sign on for an opportunity to to be assigned the task of exploring an uncivilized planet in the galaxy. Sam is told their success will depend on their ability to survive in an unfamiliar environment and their success in gathering rare and precious minerals. I think for Sam it's not really going to be about uh, finding anything. I think it's going to be about traveling. So here we can press zero to find more information about any one of our three possible destinations. Let's check out the first one. Um, this planet, RT48VI2W, has a sometimes harsh climate, many some dangerous animals. Uh, Vegetable resources are theoretically available. Doesn't seem the most enticing planet. Let's see if we can have a look at the second option. 2Y01PK6 has a mild climate, few and harmless animals, abundant resources. That sounds a lot more inviting. And what's the third planet? The third planet has a normally has this climate, no animal life and theoretically available. I mean, if we get to choose, let's ship out to our second choice, 2Y. Landing on 2Y01PK6 successful. Commence exploration. A party of Sam Blinkoff has come upon a food source. Food units available 12. Food obtainable from an energy unit 0.61. Units of fuel available to party 250. How much fuel for food production? And here I'm a little confused as to precisely what this means. But I think it's indicating that the most food units we can obtain here are 12, and they'll cost us 0 0.61 each. So I use a calculator just simply to divide the food units by the fuel cost to get the maximum fuel that we'd be able to use anyway, which is 19.67 in this case. Um, and I have a go at that. You can input 
a um, a value to decimal places. Um, and the party of Sam Blenkoff has just found a source of usable fuel, 77. Unfortunately, the expedition can only store 250 units of fuel. So we're uh, resource to our maximum of fuel. For any natives on the horizon, the natives would like to trade 41 units of the planet's resources for 15 units of food. Of course we'll trade. Um, we want to we want to establish relations with other other peoples and other worlds. Party of Sam Blenkoff has just discovered a mineral find of limited value. In fact, this find seems only to be limited by the amount of fuel the expedition has to mine out the resource. So we can get probably two units of minerals per unit of fuel. We have 250 units of fuel, that would make sense. Um, but the value is not high, we'd get 47 credits for each unit. Uh, we need enough fuel to be able to take off again as well. Let's get a hundred uh, fuel units worth. Resource there is. So our our one opportunity in the universe, with all other doors closed to us seemingly, is to head out on the missions of an empire. to extract resources and to colonize. Let's see, we have fairly high values of food and fuel. Uh, we know resources are abundant. Let's continue our exploration of this planet. We come across a food source. Food units available 17. Food obtainable from an energy unit 0.57. Uh, we have 130 units of fuel, so I'm going to do another calculation and try. To, uh, sure, we go. Well, I'm going to make it a bit less than our total. I'm going to use 20 units of fuel to try and save us some for extracting minerals if we need to. We found fuel, fantastic, 83 units. And that's less than our maximum, so we didn't get that message from our interface here. It seems a wild and lonely place, doesn't it? We don't, we don't get to pass conversation with people, but we do get to trade um, and wander across this landscape. I wonder what this planet looks like. I wonder how it tastes and smells, how it feels on the skin. If indeed we can uh, take our take our suit off, let's trade with these people. Discovered another mineral find. Once again, I'm limited by our fuel resources. Let's see. Um, we have 193 uh, units of fuel. Um, the this minerals a higher value, and we can get more per unit of fuel. I'm going to risk 90 uh, units of fuel on this, um, which should end up leave us with 103 units of fuel. But I think something something is happening behind the scenes here. Some uh, usage perhaps through travel um, that takes us down to 86. I think now is probably a good time uh, that we could leave the planet, head back to our base, our home base, whatever planet that might be. Let's pack up leave and try to cash in. I look at that sense of travel, the takeoff beeps sound and with the text scrolls up. Return jump to home plan successful. Value of minerals after sale. Galactic credits 14,302. Accumulated earnings of Sam Blenkoff 22,381. 
um, far in advance of the 74 we had before. Um, current age of sound length of 24. And that's the end of, so that comes to the end of the program. So on a technical level, the um, to get us to continue with our career of exploration, we'd have to enter a, a console command for, for the actual Apple II and run run that program again. And then we can again enter Sam's name. I think Sam would like to continue exploring. I think maybe Sam's heart lies in the stars. We receive the same mandate and we have different destinations. Let's let's see what we can find out about these. Native human population on this planet there are none. There is the possible existence of supernatural powers. Now this is oh so exciting. The possibility that we could find an entirely new form of life, uh, a transcendental form of life possibly. Um, usable fuel is scarce or non-existent. The value of available resources is limited. So we hitherto we hadn't known there was the possibility of encountering a supernatural power. How enticing is that? Let's see if we can find out about the second planet in our list. It has primitive warlike humans living there apparently. Uh, the existence of supernatural powers is doubtful. Usable fuel is readily available. And the value of available resources is substantial to incredible, which is an indication that um, they would be worth a lot, a lot more credits than the resources we'd found before. But what of our third planet? Oops. Oh dear, I mistyped. I put zero and three. I've accidentally sent us to the third planet without checking what it was like. I guess that's one of the things that can happen when you press the wrong button. You end up somewhere you didn't expect. FX7GY69. I wonder what it will be like. So we've immediately we found a food source. That's encouraging. Maybe it won't be too hostile or desolate a place. Um, and a pretty good rate of fuel conversion to food here. So we can use. I don't think I calculated that correctly. I think we can use, let's say, 17 units of fuel in this case to create some more food for us. And we've found more fuel. Fantastic, which has filled us up. And there are friendly natives. Well, I'm so, so glad it was a friendly um, place who want to trade their resources with us. So glad. We discovered a mineral deposit too. It will please our employer. Great, I wonder. This is a limited value, so this seems like a, a fairly safe place to be. So Sam, I think there's reasonable value here. Sam is going to expend quite a lot of fuel here, given the choice, um, so they can head back all the sooner and try again to find another planet where there might be the chance of meeting a hitherto unknown form of life. is when the the life you've been given is full of so many missed opportunities, so many um, closed opportunities. The, the chance of finding wonder and something new is so enticing. Sam has aged to 25 and has a bit more money. Sam desperately wants to head back into space and not press the launch button before they've read the uh, entire prospectus for each planet. see what options we have.
this has scarce and non-existent human foodstuffs and for limited resources. That doesn't sound the most promising. The second planet has abundant but hidden foodstuffs, moderate to large deposits. And the third Scarce or non-existent, substantial to incredible. Maybe a third this time. No mention of life forms at all. Maybe we'll be lucky, maybe we'll discover something. Bad weather has hit the party of Sam Blankoff. Bioscanners have detected deterioration in the health of Sam Blankoff. Oh dear, the party of Sam Blankoff has just found a source of usable fuel. Um, we, had a, we had expended much. We have a minimal find of substantial to incredible value. That's lucky. This might be enough to um, to be financially viable for the... Um, the operator this this voyage. Yeah, it has a fairly high unit value, um, fairly productive. Let's put 190 units of fuel into it and try to return home. a high enough value, I think we should return home and then see if there are any more supernatural entities on the horizon for us. Five point five five million those minerals made. And Sam now has indeed five million. What a what a change of fortunes. For someone with no no prospects in the forces. But then in this universe, what is there to spend money on? What possessions does Sam have that they know about? That they that are important. But in this universe the decisions we are told are important. Um, aren't the, the daily decisions they're monthly or yearly uh, increments and so much of our lives is controlled by by systems we, we don't, can't see and don't understand this part there is no oxygen and no life it seems a bad Bad choice, I think. Let's look at the second. Um, supportive of life, but with dangerous animals and primitive friendly humans, apparently. Supportive of life, few and harmless, primitive friendly. Uh, the same as before. So I think Sam would choose the third one and continue voyaging on in hope of finding the the marvellous, the miraculous. And we'll leave them there, travelling through space. And we shall return to Chris and see how she's faring after her administrative post. Chris has wandered down to the commercial port to inquire about trading. You can see here, even uh, even the means by which we interact with the universe, our interface, uh, is uncertain and shifting. Entering is spelt with two R's. Language changes. 
let's see if um, Chris has a credit rating of 84, which I, I take to be good. Um, the minimum down payment is 0.17 million for a scout ship. I think we can afford it. Let's see. We could get a loan for the rest. Yes. Chris is in business. Suddenly the future is, is looking prosperous. Let's see our ship. We're at Xenon 12 Wholesale Market. We can purchase weapons and electronics. Um, obviously there's a moral cost to, to shipping weapons. Um, for sure, but this is a militarised universe it appears. Um, its weapons are weightier, they have a weight of 100, electronics have a weight of 10. Uh, weapons are more expensive. I guess what we need to do here is another calculation to work out the um, the profit margin on each um, and just stock up on, on that, that product. So let me make a calculation on the comparison. That's my calculator. Okay. That's the ratio for that one. So, by, not by a lot, but electronics are slightly more uh, more profitable. So let's stock up on electronics. Um, so we can buy them here with this interface. It lets us know what cash we have, the credit that is available to us, our total funds from both of those and the weight capacity of our ship and what we have currently purchased. So we would like to change purchases from the list because we have none. Um, and if we're going to make this run, we need to uh, start making money. So let's purchase electronics. We have a capacity of 10,000. So we need 1,000 units of. Oh, excuse me. We want. Uh, the second option, electronics, not 1,000 units of them. And we are at capacity. We will lock in those transactions. And let's see, we've gained one high passage. The manual assures us that um, high passages are passengers with staterooms, and low passengers are those who enter cryo chambers for their journey. Let's see what happens. Current price, uh, galactic credits per unit, 21.57 for fueling, okay. And for our scout ship, we need uh, 98 to 122 of fuel. And from my personal previous experience in space traveling, I recommend having the maximum recommended at the very least. You're, you're risking danger if you go with the average. Um, so let's just purchase 122 units of fuel for our ship. Fuel for voyage 122. Here we are. <coughs> Taking off. Makes you nervous, doesn't it? I wonder if the uh, the crew is ah oh, the twinkling stars of space appear through our window. I wonder if we're in sleep too as we journey through the stars. Oh, that counter. We successfully acquired orbit around Y732A. It turned to continue. Goods now being sold through the Y732A Commodity Exchange. Proceeds from sale 15, 15,800. Cost of goods 12,420. Only 3,380. Credits made. We have crew expenses, um, cash on hand, interest, quite a large sum of interest. Our net worth is a negative figure. We're going to have to make another voyage, aren't we? Um, trading is hard. Estimated length of trip three Earth months. So, as exploratory voyages pass the years of our life, so, so will trading. 
So we'd be heading back to Xenon 12. Um, and we can purchase drugs or crystals. I will compare the profit margins for these and see what might be best to take on. Drugs, apparently. So I think we're going to have to forego any ethical considerations as drugs uh, and guns seem to be broadly accepted in society. Um, as part of its fabric, it's sort of conservative and uh, capitalist uh, fabric. We are we are just forced to live in this in this universe and survive any way we can. Sometimes it's a series of. Uh, more on ethical choices to make money. Sometimes it's a fight to the death, as we've experienced. So we're going to purchase drugs. They only cost two units of weight, so that would be 5,000, is that correct? That is correct. Let's lock that in. Um, Oh, fantastic, we have eight passengers this time. That will help and make the trip more profitable. Um, fuel seems to be a bit cheaper here. That's good. We have 38 units of fuel. I'm going to be cautious and get 100, so we have 138 in total. Um, and that should see us through, hopefully. I mean, it's always concerning that we may not even escape orbit under certain circumstances. It's hard to know what they would be. I'm going to look out on this field of stars with me and share our voyages through space. Cold and lonely. We we hire crews, but we don't we don't speak to them. Maybe we we don't have any time to. Maybe we're loading and unloading um, and frozen frozen solid on the voyage. Maybe all we can see are the stars. So we made 13,000 on that trip. Um, uh, we're still in negative. Let's go on another voyage. I wonder where else we could go in our trading circuit. It'd be a three month journey. Oh, we just go back from Xenon 12 to Y732A. It's just a two. Two, uh, two pole trading axis um, and we have a lot of debt to pay off let's make this journey um, oh, I will compare the, the values of these again hang on the weapons would be selling at a loss. So that's an easy one to work out, isn't it? Let's get this uh, stock up on electronics. So that would be a, th a thousand, wouldn't it? Um, so I want option one, the second uh, stock. We want one thousand of those, please. Is there any way to make any money? Um, that's correct. Let's hope we pick up passengers, four of them. That will help. Um, fuel 33, so let's get another 100. So we could use up a little over what might be expected last time. And, and this is a voyage we can keep making. And does it, does it get any less extraordinary, I wonder? As we repeat the experience. We see some of the same stars, maybe from a different angle, as we travel successful acquisition of orbit around Y732A, it returned to continue. It's now being sold through the Y732A commodity exchange. Okay, we made a little money. Our net worth is in the negative. Um, 
We have cash on hand. Let's try to pay off some of our loan. 15.6% interest rate. Um, so we have cash on hand. Let's see if we can pay off 5,000 credits of loan. Is that good? Let's void on again. I suspect to Y... I can't remember the name of it now. Y732A. That's it. Let's see. So crystals are looking pretty good there, aren't they? Let's see what that margin is. Okay. Yes, that is that is the best one to um, to take on. So we'll take on a cargo of of those crystals, please. So that's option one to buy. Option two for crystals. And they are 50, so would that be 2,000? I think it would be. No, oh, 200, okay. Um, I need to edit that then. That's more like it. Let's lock that in. Five passengers will help. Uh, fuel 21, let's get. Just over 100, 105 would be plenty. As the stars appear again. Thank you for joining me on this voyage through space. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have with successfully acquired orbit around Xenon 12. Um, I find this uh, a strange and wonderfully involving game even though it throws you very little details. It implies a much larger, wor larger world and hidden systems that are oblique. It's very sparse and direct in, in how it interfaces um, with us. It's not straightforward in in how it operates and we're trying to navigate it our, our very best um, and to find meaning, find wonder out there. Um, so I hope you can appreciate some of the things I, I enjoy about it and find so compelling about this um, strange old artifact of, uh, of an earlier time of computing. Um, what should we do now? We still have debts. Can we exit the game and pay loans? Let's try it. You have insufficient funds to pay off the loans outstanding on your ship. Our options are 1. Allow authorities to foreclose on the ship. 2. Skip off to another star system with the ship and hope to escape future detection. Warning, severe penalties apply for skipping to avoid payment on a starship loan. Additional note, foreclosure involves the loss of all possessions, not just the ship. I'm curious as to what other possessions Chris Maniatis has, but they definitely want to keep their ship, so they're, they're going to take the exciting option and they're going to skip off to another SAR system. Because much like this game itself, there's an element of the illicit here. For, I hadn't mentioned it before, but space itself was derived from the Traveller tabletop role-playing system without permission uh, by the creators Stephen Pedersen and Sherwin Steffen. Um, and they were later compelled by a, a lawsuit from the, the publishers of Traveller Game Designers Workshop uh, to, to cease selling it in uh, 1982. But by that time, uh, they'd already created... Um, a replacement product for for space. They had issued a new started issuing a new series of role playing uh, space games uh, with a with a graphical component this time. Uh, the Empire series. These were written by David Mullick, who before or possibly Mullich, uh, I should check, um, who before that uh, wrote uh, a supplement uh, for this game. So an extra disc that you can get that provides the same character creation and two uh, new scenarios, 
which I think we might look at in another video. Um, I might try treat the um, presentation of that a little differently to this one, um, because it has slightly different characteristics, although it's, um, it adds interesting nuance to, to what was already a very nuanced picture that we've created in this, this example of, of the different elements of space. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you can find the um, the wonder and the fear and the um, the mystery that I do in it. Um, and until next time, uh, please take care. I'll see you again. Bye bye.